first off, we want to thank you all for coming out. Every year, I just, it gets more and more people, and that's pretty impressive. We always get um, more and more support year by year by year, and that's something that I can't thank you guys enough for showing up. Um, so you see behind me the Downingtown Indoor Drumline, um, composed of kids, your kids. Woo! Woo! Before we get started, I kind of want to explain some of the things we do here because, to be honest, I'm not sure that everybody knows exactly what we do. And it's kind of my job to educate you guys as well, not only your kids. Um, so, so basically this activity, as you can see, is made up of both pitched and non-pitched percussion instruments, right? The non-pitched being the battery percussion that you see in your marching bands in the fall. Um, so this activity, solely percussion, with the addition of some electronics. Um, and it's a pretty impressive thing. It's more of a, I compare it to a play. It's, it's a, a total production. Every year we come up with a show, come up with a theme, a concept, and then we try to portray it to the best of our ability. Um, as you can see, the floor is pretty vibrant, right? That obviously has something to do with the show. Yeah, the floor. Um, I'll get to that in a second. Okay. <clears throat> and, and basically, it's not, us just standing here and ramming a bunch of notes down your throat. Um, we're here to tell, to tell a story, portray a theme, and um, hopefully to, to capture your attention, not only through playing, but just through the overall concept that we're, we're portraying up here. Um, so before, before I get too far into it, I need to thank a large number of people. First off, the, the parents of all these kids have been tremendous, tremendous. Um, they, they're the ones that painted this floor, believe it or not. This floor is the nicest floor I've ever seen in this school. Um, and, you know, in, the, in our circuit, in MAPS, it's a very impressive floor. And I want to thank, especially Parachute, yeah, Pat. uh, Ruth yeah. Ann, Pat. Ryan, Ryan. Ryan. Ooh, Pat. Uh, this is the parents that helped me most of all put this whole thing together. Um, it's, it's, it's a treat to have the, that kind of support here. And that's not something that you find everywhere. Um, okay, with that, um, I, I want to talk about some of the upgrades. Some of you guys have seen us before, and you, you kind of know what we're about. Um, I am new. I am new to uh, this position. I've been teaching at, at this school for three years. Um, we've got a seven-person staff, which has stayed the same. Different people, same amount. Um, it's very important we have a large staff, so we have more eyes on what's going on through our weekly rehearsals. Um, right now, it's 26 on seven, if you count the kids versus staff. And even that's a scary number, but we're lucky to have this big group of people. So I don't know if I introduce myself, but I, I'm Josh Bailey, caption head and director of this ensemble you see behind us. I guess I'll go down the line. To my right is Vince Pilati. Uh, he's, he's working with the pit. To his right is Andrew Shapula. Yeah. He works with the battery, um, especially the bass drums. It's kind of his area of expertise. Um, to his right, Aaron Greaser, same thing. He's been work, working with the battery. Um, tenors, he works with our tenor players, most of all. To his right is Sarah, Sarah Kremerer. She, Kemmerer, sorry, ex extra R. Um, right, 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 right. She works with the battery as well. Um, her kind of specialty would be the cymbals, all six of them. It's the largest cymbal line we've ever had here. Kind of scary, very impressive. Um, to Sarah's right is Corey Lott, also working with the pit. To her right is Josh Lawrence, kind of my right-hand man in this whole work operation. Helped me out with a lot of the uh, conceptual stuff, figuring out what the show's gonna be. That's Josh Lawrence, he mainly works with the pit as well, but he's, he's definitely um, been working with the battery whenever we're short-handed. So that is the staff, 2009-2010 season here at Downingtown. <laughs> Back to the upgrades thing. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what we've got going on with the, the battery. Um, I guess we'll start from right to left. These symbols, in my opinion, look brand new. However, that is not the case. Um, thanks to Sarah, we've made sure that they are polished and clean. Moving on. Tenors. Yeah, sorry. Not a whole lot to talk about. They're shiny. Tenors. We, we've outfitted the tenors with the brand new drum heads. Um, we try to do this every season. This is upon Aaron's request. The man knows what he's talking about. And uh, we've got a whole new set of heads, as well as this drum line has switched um, 
stick company. We've always used Vic Firth. We're now a completely innovative percussion um, drum line. So I guess the tenors are using the innovative Tim Jackson's, right? And Jim Casella's too, I think. Um, if, you're, if you're looking at the snares on the bottom there, um, this year we, we've outfitted them with what's called moleskin and uh, packing tape, regular packing tape. All these, all these changes seem minor, but they make a major, major effect in the sound and the textures that we're looking for on the floor. Because again, these instruments are designed for outdoors. They're designed to cut through a marching band. So we, we have to make some adaptations to, um, to kind of make up for that. The bass drums, my favorite improvement. Um, brand new heads, and believe it or not, these are probably the oldest drums in, in the, the battery. Um, and they look brand new. We replaced many lugs. Um, brand new heads and the foam to muffle them are on the edges. Again, an, an adaptation because we're indoors. Um, now I'm really excited to talk about the pit. If you could see through the staff, all the boards there, Marimba's Vibes, I think Xylo's got it too. Um, we have mounted cymbals, that's a brand new thing that I, I would like to point out because it's very exciting. A lot of our co competition is doing these same things and you kind of got to play the game to win. I'm sure all of you know. Um, with that, we added electronics. The, the amp I'm speaking through is not part of our setup, it's just so you can hear me. Um, but we have a PA, PA, and we're partially mic'd. We've, we've mic'd the marimbas up front. Again, so you can hear them, right? They're a much softer instrument than the battery. And um, on top of that, the way we portray the story is usually through narration. Instead of, instead of doing live narration, this year we, we've added a, a sampler. It's called a linear wave sampler. Basically, it's uh, something a DJ would use. We've recorded fragments of the story on it, and it's as simple as just pushing a button to tell which part of the story you want. Projects through the PA, and hopefully you guys can hear it. Um, so I guess at this point, I'm going to hand the mic over to Vince, and he's going to talk about the, uh, the pit, a little bit more about what they do, and they're going to run through some warm-ups for you guys. Vince Kalei. So, this, so, this activity is indoor drumline, but part of the indoor drumline is adding a melodic component to the show. Because anytime you're listening to music, you've got to have some kind of melody to it. It makes it a lot more interesting. So the pit ensemble, the front ensemble, is what supplies the melody in our show. It's comprised of a bunch of different mallet instruments. And of, as Josh was mentioning, we have a lot of upgrades, a lot of electronics. And uh, we mic'd some of the instruments this year for better sound quality. Uh, we're going to play a couple of warm-ups now. Is Josh back there? Yeah. We're going to play a couple of warm-ups for you now because warming up is a big part of playing. And the drum line is going to show you some warm-ups after we do too. So we're going to show you some of our warm-ups to get our hands loose and to get ready to play and to get our timing on. So let's do, uh, how we do a scale? Like we'll do scales one in uh, E flat. E flat. Go ahead, Josh.
So, as I was saying, a warm-up is to get your hands in shape and get your ears listening for time. But a lot of the warm-ups we do are a teaching tool as well. If they're learning all these different keys and all this different music, it's a lot of music theory for them to take with them to their other instruments. A lot of these kids play other instruments in band, choir, orchestra, whatever it may be. So it's very good for teaching them a lot of music theory and a lot of things that they can use and apply elsewhere. Now the drum is going to show you some of their warm-ups a little bit louder than us. I'll hand that over to you, Josh. Just a little bit. Okay. Um, Barry, if you guys want to go ahead and pick them up. Thank you. Uh, we're, we're basically going to play, I guess, three, three of our, I don't even know, um, large number of warm-ups. Basically, there's a, there's a certain, um, I guess you could call, a, a, to, a to F list of stock warm-ups that most drum lines play. You know, each one is to warm up a different technical aspect of what they're doing. Look at how accent tap. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, and most schools have one, one exercise for each. And they, they will drill it, work it hard, multiple tempos, multiple dynamics. Um, we have two. Uh, we have two for each exercise. Reason being is I don't want th them to ever get too comfortable. The idea is to get them to always keep thinking. That's the, the number one thing that I've learned from some colleagues and from life experience. Is you, you've got to keep your head on. You've got to think about what you're doing. So there's, there's kind of some method to my madness. And um, I guess we're going to play three exercises today out of our, you know, probably eight to 12. I haven't, I haven't counted. Um, so we're going to play our legato exercise, um, which is just basically um, a full extension, right? They're going to play nice and loud. It's pretty simple, technically, but the idea is to stretch out your muscles, the larger muscle groups, because we're playing at a high velocity, high stick height. So, uh, Aaron, is he going to admit? Let's go ahead and play legato, guys. Set.
the cool, the cool thing that everybody likes to see. Um, so we're going to play our triplet rolls exercise. Same thing. Essentially, this is double beats. Just much, much faster. Much faster. Here you go, guys. Triplet rolls. Of joy, exhilaration, and carelessness. 
weather has been a very big issue lately, and this is actually our second rehearsal in the last two weeks. Um, so we haven't had a whole lot of time to prepare. So I'm very proud of what these guys have put together. Oh, yeah. Yeah.
swiftly, Icarus had fallen to the sea, and it was in the sea where his young spirit remained. Just so you know, that, that was up through the pit feature, or the ballad, if you call that. We still have an entire closer to go, um, so I, I would hope that you all come out to see that. Also, these uniforms are um, kind of makesh makeshift uniforms for tonight. We have uh, some nice shiny uniforms coming in soon. So there's a lot, a lot of new things to see, and uh, the show's only improving. So we really hope you guys all come out and see us again. All right, thank you guys for coming out. Again, downtown Drumline. Thank you, Gavin. Dave, 